Today we're going to be covering adding notifications to our chat rooms whenever a user messages inside of one of these chat rooms. We'll be handling the user list going forward, but for this video we're just focusing on the chat rooms to very quickly throw together a like unread messages counter. We'll be doing this using Chris from GoRails uh, Notice Gem, and we can get started just by running bundle add noticed, so we'll do that. So I'll full screen this and say bundle add noticed which will add it to our gem file. After that's done, we then need to uh, run a noticed model generator. So for this, we can type rails g noticed colon model, which will generate our noticed model and it'll generate our migrations. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at this migrations file first, which will be over here in our DB folder, migrate, and it's gonna be the last migration. Once we're in here, uh, one thing to notice is we have a couple fields generated for us. Because we're using Postgres, this is going to be set to JSONB for our params. If you're using SQL Lite, it's going to be set to JSON. If you have to switch between the two, you need to be careful because it needs to be JSONB for Postgres. So you might have to change it in the future if you run into some errors with your notifications uh, if you start off with SQL Lite and move to, to Postgres later. So that's just something to keep in mind. Next thing we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll run a rails g noticed colon notification and we'll call this the message notification. I'm thinking about doing user mentions in the future, which might be a mention notification as well. But for now, we'll just leave it as a message notification. Once that's just done, we can go ahead and run a rails db colon migrate command to migrate the database. And here I already have the table created because I have it in my demo app. So let me do a rails db colon drop command. Okay, apparently I already have it running somewhere. So let me go check. Okay, now that we've dropped it, we can go ahead and do a rails db colon setup command. And now we need to do a rails db colon migrate and a rails db colon seed command. And now we can run a rails s to start the server again. And we're good to go. Let's come over here and let's go to the home page. We'll click log in. Dean at example.com with a password of password. I'll go ahead and I'll zoom in a bit. I'll click start chatting. We got two users and two channels. So I guess we got three users. Let me open up the general channel. And what I want to do is whenever I create a message, I just want anyone that's in the general channel to see that message. So for that, we're probably going to need to open up another window and come over to localhost and sign into one of these other accounts. So let me do that real quick. Okay, I got my john at doe.com account. So let me go ahead and join the uh, general and the test channel, I guess. There we go, I'm in both of them. I'll put john in general and I'll put dean inside of the testing channel. And now we'll test this as we go forward. So we have this set up. We now need to deal with actually creating the notifications. So the way I want it to work is when you send a message in the chat, it then comes back and it goes into the uh, message model and says, hey, you need to, uh, update your notifications. So let's come into here and let's just check uh, our after create commit. We'll add in something that just says uh, notify recipients. So after we create a message, it'll notify the recipients, update the parent room to set the time of the last message, and then it'll broadcast the updates. So we can come down here and we can do a private def notify recipients. And then for this, we can say users in room is going to be equal to room dot joined users because we already created that relationship earlier. And then we can iterate through these just by saying users in each uh, room. And we want to check if the uh, or we can say next if the user that is uh, in this room because we're iterating through each of them, if that user in the room is equal to the uh, the user that sent the message, which will just be the self.user because we're inside of the message. Then we want to skip. If we are a different user than the user that sent the message, then we want to create a notification. Oops, notification, which is going to be equal to a message notification, that thing we generated earlier. And instead of saying dot new, like GitHub Copilot suggesting, we'll do a dot with. And in here, we'll say this is this will have a message of self and it'll have a room of self.room, and there's a good chance my formatter will change this. Yeah, so just leave it as room colon, which I guess is the same thing. And then we'll say notification.deliver underscore later, and we'll deliver this to the user. 
Because again, the user is anyone except for the user who sent the message. So everyone else in the chat room needs to receive this notification. Once that's done, we can go ahead and go over to our room.rb. Once that's done, we can go ahead and we can go over to our user.rb. And right here, we'll add in a line that says has many uh, notifications, dependent destroy. And we probably want to do as recipient. And then we can save that. And then the next thing we want to do is come into our views, our rooms, and I guess we want to come into our uh, room partial. And in our room partial, what we want to do is we have this container here around our room. Let's just do something like a dot room dash name dash notification dash block, just something descriptive to wrap around this. And then right here, after we do that, we can then say render a partial with rooms slash notifications room is going to be room room is going to be room there we go and now we need to create this notifications partial so let's go do that we'll right click on rooms new file underscore notifications.html.erb and then in here we need to do a unread which is going to be equal to room dot notifications underscore as underscore room so we're casting it to the to the room and then we can check through all of the room's notifications and we'll do a check to see which type it is. Because again, I said I was gonna do maybe like mentions. So here we'll just check if it is a message notification. And then we wanna say dot name just so we can uh, convert it to a string. Because the uh, room notifications have a type which will be equal to this class name as a string. So that's why we're doing it. Then we can check if the recipient is the current user. Now, if you want this to work with Turbo so that it updates in real time as a message comes through, which we'll cover in a future video, uh, but for now, you just need to know you don't want to call current user here because when you do the broadcast, uh, the application's not going to know who the current user is uh, on the recipient side. It'll check the, for the current user when you send the broadcast, and it'll send that one current user to everyone it won't send the message and then check who the current user is on the client side. So that's something to keep in mind. But here we now have the unread count, which means we can do a if uh, unread.count is greater than zero. So if we have some unread messages, then we just want to return a uh, string where we'll say plus and then the unread count. So say unread count. And we'll end the string like that. So we're just returning a plus with a counter if the if it's greater than zero, basically. So now that we have that, we can come over to our room and refresh to see what we broke. Oh, I think I know what we did. We have to actually come over to our room model real quick. Let me full screen this. And we need to actually give our room model the notifications. So we'll say the room has noticed notifications with a model name of notification. Uh, because right now we're trying to convert the room to the notifications, but we don't have uh, notifications on the room. Yeah, so there we go. So that works. And now we can refresh. And in testing, I'll send a message. So that updates in real time right there. And then if we refresh on the uh, other side of the application, you can see that the uh, John user doesn't have a notification yet. So we can actually test that to make sure that's true by opening up a console. And I'll full screen this. And then in here, we'll say Rails C. And then we can do user.second.email. I think that's John. Yeah, that's John. Okay, so we'll say user.second.notifications. And you can see the second user has no notifications. We can also do a notification dot count to check how many notifications we have. So you can see it's not creating notifications right now. So let's go ahead and let's do another test. We'll refresh in John's perspective and you can see it's doing the sorting on the front end. But if we try to do a notification dot count, we're still getting a zero. So one thing to note is if we come over to our uh, GitHub repo here, it should cover the delivery method somewhere. And basically we need to enable what delivery method we would like. And you can see there's a whole bunch of options here like database, Slack, email, or Twilio. And because it's a chat room, I think it makes sense to stick with the uh, database option. So let's come over to our app notifications, message notification. 
and let's enable the database delivery option. This is also where you can add some additional methods if you'd like to sort of render the notification, uh, but we're not gonna be doing that. I did cover that in the uh, Intro to Rails blog tutorial for notifications, and I'll have a link to that video in the video description. Uh, but basically this enables us to be able to send a database notification. So we can say hello from John's perspective refresh from Dean's perspective, and now we're getting the plus one. So I can say uh, another one, and I'll refresh in John's, you'll see general is still set to, to zero, and Dean now has two inside of there. And I can say, hey John, I'm in here, yo. And it sets the, the testing channel up top, and if John refreshes and he comes back, he'll see he has an unread notification. Now if Dean comes over to general, uh, it's not being set to red. That's because we didn't actually put any logic in here to set this to red. So we do need to deal with that. And because we're navigating to a specific room here, you can probably guess that we're gonna have to come into the rooms controller. And in here, we're gonna have to add some logic that handles the uh, updating of the notifications so that they're set to red basically. So we're gonna be in the show method whenever we come to this page. So we can just come down here after we set all users and we can just say set notifications to red. You could also just cut this and up here do a uh, before action. And the reason why we're doing it here is because we're gonna have to uh, rely on some variables. So we'll just say set the notifications to red. And then let's do something like notifications is equal to at single room dot notifications underscore as underscore room dot where the recipient because we should now have a notification in here. So let me just try this notification. So if we do notification dot first, it, this is basically what it looks like. Let me bring this up a bit. So we have our type here and we have a recipient type, which is the user and a recipient ID. So we can check who the recipient is of this first notification by saying notification dot first dot recipient, which will give us a user ID. So this is the Dean account. So, what we can do is we can say where the recipient is the current user. And then we want to grab all of these that are unread. And then after we grab, oops, after we grab these, we can then say set all of these to uh, have a red at with a time dot now. Uh, actually, we want to do time dot zone dot now. And basically what this is doing is it's grabbing all of the notifications for this room where the current user is the person that received the notifications. And then we're grabbing only the ones that are already set to unread. That way we're not updating all of the messages for this user, just the ones that they haven't seen since they joined the room. And because of this, you're also not getting notifications if you're not a member of a room. So if we come over here now and we refresh the page, you'll see that the counter goes to uh, zero. And if I come over to testing and I refresh the page, I guess I have to actually click on testing for John. I'll click on testing and you can see the counter goes away. And if we come over to our VS code again, we can do a, uh, let's say user.first.notifications.count. You can see he has two notifications, but then we can do dot unread dot count. And there's your zero notifications. Now I can also check the red notifications if I'd like, like you can see there's two there. And if I just grab them, you can see uh, what the notifications are. And if you wanna grab these again, it's all inside of a params hash. So you can just say notifications dot, and then you can do like dot params to grab the params again. And then you can do something like, I guess, room to grab the room. And then you can do something like, let's check if the room is private. And then you can do something like, is it, uh, is private? Like what's that set to? and you can see there it's set to false. So if we come back to the room, maybe we'll grab one that's not just a Boolean. So let's check what the name of this room is and it's set to general. And the way this is set up in an actual notification is you go into your notifications here and you would do this, this logic in here. So maybe you have a method that's something like uh, get room name, and then you would return something like um, return the params room and then the name of the room something like that 
You can also do it for your URL to redirect to the specific room if you would like. But this is the basic idea of what, uh, what the notifications can do here. And then in the future, we'll deal, once we refactor it so that we can uh, update who sent the message and what the contents were, so that if you sent a message that says you, we'll also add in the notifications. I thought this was just a good way to get the conversation started about what we're gonna be covering going forward a little bit. But okay, that's gonna do it for this tutorial. Again, like I said, if you're interested in seeing a bit more about how notifications work, I did do a tutorial covering the notifications on the beginner blog video series. And uh, I'll have a link to that intro to Rails tutorial series on the screen right now.